The Sony a7 III. It's arguably one of the best mid-range bang for buck cameras since its release in 2018. I've had the a7 III since February of last year, so about 11 months, and it has performed exactly as I'd have expected, if not better in some situations. I've used it for portraits, landscapes, product photography, and all the videos I've made since then have been shot on my a7 III, which I'm using right now. And honestly, it's been great. But with the release of the a7 IV, now seems like a great time to talk about whether or not you should just get the a7 III or spend that little bit extra, or a lot more extra, on the a7 IV. So in this video I'll be giving you 5 reasons why I think the a7 III is still worth buying, but also 5 reasons that it may not be for those of you who might need that little bit extra from the a7 IV. Throughout this video I'll be putting up some of my own photos and videos as well so you can see some examples of how I've used the a7 III in the last 11 months. Let's get right into it. The a7 III still has some of the best image and video quality and dynamic range of any camera at this price point in my opinion. Even to this day, and I've had the camera for almost a year, I still take it into Lightroom or even look at my videos when I finish shooting with it and they still impress me. And so when it comes to photos, there's so much data in the dynamic range, in the shadows and the highlights that there's so much you can do when you're editing your photos. Which in my opinion makes the a7 III a great camera for beginners as well because if you're not too familiar with the camera settings, you can still get some great image quality and if you do underexpose, it doesn't matter too much, you can lift up those shadows and if you overexpose, you can fix the highlights as well. Now I know that the a7 IV has image quality just as good as the a7 III, if not better. So you could argue, well that's not really a pro to the a7 III because I could just get the a7 IV and it'd be even better. But my point is the a7 III for the price has great dynamic range and image quality. I mean you can get the a7 III here for around £1700 and even less if you use Sony's cashback offers. And if you get it used on eBay, well, it'll be even cheaper. Regardless of how you get your a7 III, you can probably get it almost a thousand pounds cheaper than the a7 IV, meaning you can spend that extra money on filters, accessories, lenses, stuff you're gonna need to actually use the camera anyway. And the a7 III is still one of the few cameras out there that can shoot full frame 4K. Now, it may not be the highest bit rate as some of the other cameras you can get now, and it also may not offer 4K 60, but you're still getting great full frame 4K picture quality on a camera that you can get for under £2,000. So when people come to me and ask about mirrorless cameras, I still find it hard to recommend anything other than the a7 III. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to leave it a like, it really helps out the channel. So my second point is the Sony E-mount. Now I know that this is also something on the Sony a7 IV and pretty much every other Sony camera, so you could say, well, this isn't really a pro for the a7 III. The reason I'm making it a pro is because the money you save not buying the a7 IV and getting the a7 III instead, you can spend on those lenses. And there's so many lenses to choose from. You've got lenses from Samyang, Tamron, Sigma, and probably a whole host of other brands as well that sell lenses for Sony E-mount. And I think Sony has one of the best lens mounts in the industry. There's just so much support from other companies. For example, when you look at the RF mount for Canon, there aren't that many third party lenses out yet and they're all really expensive. Whereas Sony lenses are a little bit cheaper, but they still have brilliant performance. So yeah, if you save some money by getting the a7 III, you can pick up some great lenses as well. So point number three, the autofocus. Now this is something that, you know, again, will be improved on the a7 IV and even some of Sony's other recent cameras, but the autofocus on the a7 III is still fantastic. So I used to shoot on the 5D Mark III, and I can tell you that thing was really hard to shoot with. It had no kind of eye autofocus or anything like that. And when I got the a7 III, I was absolutely amazed at how good it was at getting eyes in focus, the continuous autofocus for pet photography and stuff like that. I mean, I take photos of my dog Benji quite a lot, and you know, we go to the beach, we go to parks, whatever, and the Sony a7 a7 III is just so fast at getting his little eye in focus and it just makes the photos that much better. So if you're someone that does any kind of pet photography, you know, sports photography, any photography where there's fast moving subjects, I think you're going to find the a7 III really good. Another win in my opinion for the a7 III is the battery life. So the battery life on the a7 III is rated for 710 shots if you use the LCD and 610, I think, or 690, got to check this. Whatever, it should give you around 700 shots on the a7 III. 700 shots is fantastic for a mirrorless camera. There's still newer cameras coming out now that don't have as good battery life as the a7 III. And if you do run out of battery life, you can just use the USB port on the side and charge it on the go. 
And point number five, this is like my last big reason I think the a7 III is 100% worth it in 2022, and that is the weight and size. So you may not already have a mirrorless camera. If you're like me and you come from something like a DSLR, like the 5D Mark III, getting the a7 III will blow your mind. When I first got it, I couldn't believe how much lighter it was. I do a lot of landscape photography, so trust me, having a lighter camera is so welcomed. It makes going on hikes a lot easier. It makes me actually want to use my camera more because it's not heavy and I don't have to lug it around, I do really enjoy using the a7 III for that reason. And it also makes it great for video as well because you can just kind of discreetly put it in your pocket, well depending on what size pocket you've got, but you can just carry it around and it isn't as heavy as a big DSLR or video camera. Now I know there's a lot of people that don't like the grip on the a7 III because it's quite small, which is obviously part of just making this camera as small and compact as possible, but for my hands I've never had an issue with comfort holding the a7 III. And that's kind of it for my five reasons I think it's worth it. And I think the most important one was my first point, you know, the image quality. At the end of the day, photos are only going to be as good as the person taking them. And ultimately, the a7 III can still produce fantastic photos and videos. You need to ask yourself if you really need anything better than the a7 III in terms of megapixel count, in terms of dynamic range. It's still going to perform brilliantly in 2022 and beyond. So let's get on to the reasons that the a7 III may not be for you in 2022. And most of this is kind of the techie stuff of the a7 III because as it's getting older, the technology is starting to lag behind the newer cameras coming out. So the first thing that's not too great about the a7 III is the EVF, so the electronic viewfinder. So this is what you look through when you're taking a photo, similar to a DSLR, except there's not a mirror, it's just an LCD screen. And the EVF on the a7 III is so bad. Well, it's not so bad, it's just not very good. And if you're looking through it, it's not that clear. A lot of newer cameras have much better EVFs. And if you're someone coming from the mirror viewfinder on a DSLR, you may find the a7 III quite disappointing. To be quite honest, I did when I first got it. I looked through it and thought this really isn't great. And what makes it worse is con number two. The LCD is also not very good either. It isn't very good in sunlight. It's not very good at anything really, other than just kind of viewing your photos in a dark room. Anyone that's got an a7 III will know how difficult it is to take photos with the LCD screen in the day. I mean, I remember when I went to a trip to Wales about two years ago, and I was taking a photo in, you know, really bright daylight, and I couldn't see anything. I could not see anything on the screen, and I had to rely on that EVF, which still wasn't that good either. So all in all, it was quite a difficult shooting experience. If you're someone that wants a better EVF, a better LCD screen, greater options when you're actually viewing your images to take photos, then you may want to look at a different camera. And right now I'm filming this video on my a7 III, but I'm using the Ninja 5 recorder. And quite honestly, that is essential if you're any kind of videographer looking to get the a7 III. You're going to need an external monitor that has a brighter LCD screen. You really will notice the low resolution of the LCD on the back. And then, yeah, if it's sunny, just forget about it. So the point number three is a lack of 10-bit video. Now I've not really found this to be an issue, quite honestly, so I'm filming right now a7 III, 8-bit, and overall, the image quality, in my opinion, looks great. And I did mention this in one of my earlier videos when I spoke about actually upgrading to the a7 III. And I basically said that I was using the GH5 before. That's 10 bit, really high bit rate. But I prefer the image quality on the a7 III. Because it's full frame, you get a nicer depth of field. And overall, in my opinion, I think the image quality is a lot better. So even though it's 8 bit and isn't 10 bit, it still looks great. Now where 10-bit will really become an issue is if you are a professional videographer and 10-bit is required for your projects by whoever you're working with, then obviously the a7 III is out of the question. But also if you're someone that likes to color grade in a very specific way where you're really starting to punch with the colors and stuff like that, then you're going to find 8-bit limiting. You are probably going to want a 10-bit camera. Point number four is the sensor dust on the a7 III. Now this is an issue with every camera, but the a7 III just seems to get it worse for some reason. If you go on any forums, anywhere, Reddit, you go and look about the a7 III sensor dust issue, it seems to be a really big one. You will find yourself using one of those puffer things all the time to try and get rid of dust on your sensor. And when you go in Lightroom and use dehaze, or you play around with any of the highlights and shadows, you're gonna see some dust in the sky. It's really frustrating to be quite honest. You can get those kits to clean the sensor. And although Sony doesn't really recommend getting these, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube that kind of talk you through it and show you how to do it safely. Have I found it a huge issue during the time I've had the a7 III? 
not really, because dust on the sensor only shows up in certain situations, but it is annoying that there's no, you know, sensor cover when you turn off the camera or anything like that. Something we see now in the other Sony cameras and Canon cameras, but unfortunately not in the a7 III. Is the sensor dust gonna bother you that much? Well, I don't know, it depends how much you go out and take photos, depends how clean you are when you're actually using your camera. Are you someone that cleans it after every use? you might not have any issues. If you're someone that never cleans your camera, chucks it around, leaves lenses off exposing the sensor and that kind of thing, it might be a problem. So my last con of the a7 III is the fact that it's just getting a bit old. Well, it's not that old. I mean, it's only four years old, but technology moves fast and companies are catching up with and running straight past the a7 III. If you're someone that needs the latest and greatest for your workflow, the a7 III is gonna be lagging behind. Particularly if you're someone that needs 4K 120, 10-bit video, a higher megapixel count, these are all things you're just not going to get with the a7 III. But for the price of the a7 III, there's not gonna be that many other cameras that offer you these features anyway. The only cameras that I can think of that actually do offer a whole host of fantastic features are the Panasonic Lumix cameras. But to be quite honest, I am not a big fan of the L mount. There's barely any lenses for it, and the lenses that do exist are so expensive. One option may be the Fuji X-T4. That is a really good camera. If you look online, the pictures are great, 10-bit 4K video high bitrate as well, and the image quality looks fantastic, especially with all those Fuji profiles that you can get. But unfortunately, it's only APS-C, so if you're someone that wants full frame, you're not gonna get that with the Fuji X-T4. So what other cameras can you get in the price bracket of the a7 III that offer the a7 III's features? Well, quite honestly, not many at all, which in my opinion makes the a7 III 100% worth getting in 2022. As a healthy reminder, you can still create amazing art on old gear. If you're thinking about the a7 III, don't even think any more about it. It's a fantastic camera. It's gonna serve you well no matter what you need it for. There are gonna be some drawbacks in terms of the spec compared to what you can buy now, but as a camera, as a video camera, whatever you wanna use it for, it's still gonna be great. That's it, that's my video on the a7 III. Do you think it's still worth buying in 2022? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, it really helps out my channel. And if you wanna see more from me, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one.